Hi guys, it's Lynn with Little Fit Nursery. I am here um, with baby Clara. She is my Levi Sculpt by Bonnie Brown. And I wanted to do a video to respond to an interesting comment that I received recently. Um, uh, one of the ladies who left a comment on my channel um, asked me that she she commented that she noticed in some of the you know kind of 2020 doll collecting resolution videos that you know people had some some people had goals like that they really wanted to own um, you know a certain doll from a certain artist or that they really wanted to own a prototype doll. Um, that sort of thing that they put, you know, these as some of their, you know, collecting goals. Um, so her follow-up question to that was, do collectors collect for status? Or do you really collect, just kind of collect what you like and you don't really worry about the status? I thought that was a very, very interesting question. Um, and while I answer that, I'm actually going to change Clara into this outfit by Babidoo. Um, I got this from Children's Salon. And it's just a kind of a gender neutral outfit. It's gray and white. I thought that would look pretty on her. Because I, you know, the Levi sculpt I feel like really looks great as a boy or a girl, but it's originally, the original Levi is a boy. So, um, yes, I think that definitely, I think she can pull it off. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, so while I change her, um, I'll answer the question for my, kind of in general from what I've observed. And, um, and I guess, the bigger question would be, you know, why do why would collectors even want a, a doll from a prototype artist? That might be kind of a follow-on question. Um, but I guess I would say that, you know, when you're new to the hobby, and um, there's definitely a feeling of, I think the status piece comes in where, um, you know, if, if you know the doll is made by a prototype artist, there's probably some kind of baseline guarantee of the quality of the doll. You know you're probably getting a very, very high quality, um, well-painted work of art. Um, I think this is a very subjective art form, so, you know, a, an artist style that appeals to one collector may not appeal to another. Sorry, I probably took that off really weird. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think everybody has, like, we all have, like, our different preferences at the end of the day. So, um, but I do think that, you know, there, there can be some bragging rights associated with having a doll from, you know, from a prototype. You know, I, I think that for prototype artists or having one of the prototypes, it's just, there is something special about that. To know that your doll was one of the very original ones um, and one of the very first versions that came out. And also... Um, you know, and also most prototype artists, they don't paint multiple of that same doll. So if you really want a Sylvia Esquera baby and um, you really want one of hers, um, you know, and, and you want a specific sculpt, she will likely have only painted one of that particular kit. So, um, so, so I think it can be a little bit of a status thing. Um, but, you know, so I, I and, and I think that that's also the reason why these dolls are very highly sought after. They're just very well done and they're very beautiful. And and I think you can say the same thing. So that's kind of with regards to the Vinyl Reborns, because I think that's really where when we're talking about prototypes, it really has more to do with the Reborns, not as much to do with the silicones. Um, but I think for silicones, there can definitely be a certain amount of cachet associated with, OK, you know, I want to own like. The best of what's out there so a Romy Stridum or a Claire Taylor or whatnot like whatever you define as the best and I think that that the the best or Joanna K like the best can be very subjective and I think the prices of these dolls can also be very subjective as a result um, because you know the artists all put in probably similar amounts of work um, in p creating these babies but um, but then the price that the baby's ultimately sold for, I think is very subjective. It just is, really depends on the supply and demand. Oh my gosh, doesn't Clara look cute? She actually look, really looks like a boy <laughs> in this outfit, but I love gray and white. So cute, such a cute combination. Hello, sweet girl. And, um, and Clara, by the way, is painted by Melissa George. And I think this is one of the most stunning babies Melissa's ever painted, in my opinion. I think she looks breathtakingly real and she's just gorgeous even sitting so close to her she looks very very realistic so um so i just love her um but yeah and melissa george is a prototype artist 
Um, but I think for me, it wasn't that I just wanted to have a doll from a prototype artist, although th it, it does lend a certain credibility to that artist for sure. Um, but I think it's just like, I just want to have a beautiful well painted doll. And actually, if I can find a beautiful well painted doll that's not from a prototype artist, to me, that's actually even better because usually with, um, getting a doll from a prototype artist that comes with a higher price tag, you know, as a result. So if you can kind of find that like amazing artist who, you know, hasn't kind of quite reached that, you know, kind of collector, like, um, name recognition point yet where their work is just skyrocketing in price that could be a fantastic um, artist to buy from and there are some am amazing artists that you know are not you know prototype artists but they are advanced artists and they do beautiful work and um and you know i think their work is just as good you know as the prototype artists and and you can buy a doll from one of those artists for a fraction of the price of a prototype artist so so for me i've like never like necessarily like had to um had to have a prototype artist's work or anything like that and in fact when i see prototypes go on ebay i usually like never bid because i know the price is just going to get very high and i don't really want to play the game um so that's just me um but i do think that there are you know like i have a good friend like a dolly friend who she doesn't collect silicone she really likes the reborns and she does collect from the different prototype artists and she kind of wants to have you know um a doll from different um some of the different artists and just to kind of have a, a representation of their work which i think is awesome you know and um I, and but i think that people collect ultimately this hobby is way too expensive to collect something for status purposes um you know from the perspective of you know like you, you're wanting other people to i don't know like when i think about you know buying something for status purposes purposes um the best analogy i think about is like buying a designer handbag for example one that is very recognizable as a designer handbag so that when you carry it around people know that you're carrying you know a, an expensive bag and a really nice bag and and kind of um you know, it kind of, uh, you know, kind of gives you those bragging rights. Um, I think with dolls though, it's different. I'm, I'm not carrying my dolls like out in the general public. They're really all, they just all stay home. They're for my personal enjoyment. And then of course I do show them on YouTube and I'll bring them to like a doll show or a doll meetup. But, um, if that were my only reason for owning a specific type of doll, I think that would be really silly because I feel like the um, the number of times somebody else will actually kind of see my doll in person is very, very limited compared to, you know, something like having designer shoes or a handbag or a nice watch or, you know, something like that. And, and even I feel like with, um, you know, e even, you know, in those cases, I would, I would argue to say that, you know, people buy those not to necessarily impress others. I think it really is more about like, you just appreciate the quality and the beauty of that item. Um, I think that has, you know, that really should be your reason. Um, otherwise, but I, but I know that's not the only reason because, you know, that's the reason why there are so many, you know, fake, um, handbags out there, like fake Louis Vuitton handbags. You see that everywhere. Um, and people buy it, even though the quality is not the same as a genuine Louis Vuitton because they want the status that that item confers on them. Um, and, and I think there can also be a little bit of a, um, status thing from the perspective of, Ooh, if you bought a doll by... I don't know, Romy Stridum, you know, you, you have the budget, you know, you, you have kind of the means to be affording these dolls and, and that can kind of give you some, you know, credibility in the eyes of maybe other artists who, um, you know, might also be selling similarly expensive dolls to kind of know, cause I, th these are, these are big transactions. If you think about it, a silicone baby can cost as much as a car and like an economy car, it really can, or even a non-economy car, <laughs> um, you know, and like, so you want to, so sellers want to work with a buyer that they can trust. And sometimes it could, there could be a little bit of a status conferred from the perspective of, like, oh, okay, we know that you've bought other silicone babies before, or, you know, if you've bought, you know, prototype, you know, expensive reborns, that, you know, you're a serious collector, that you're a serious buyer, um, not, not because you have money, but because you'd be more likely to actually make a purchase from an artist who's selling an expensive doll. I, I do think that you can, um, and this should be a whole separate topic about like the buyer's reputation and things like that. So I'll try to kind of table that part of the discussion, but... But my encouragement would be, and, and how I've always collected, like I buy what I like. 
I like Melissa George's work, so I've bought you know quite a few babies from her. Um, I love Andrea Arcello's work, and um, and I've bought many babies from her, and I think she's done just an incredible job on some of the portrait babies. Um, but I do know you know a lot of my friends are crazy about Claire Taylor, and you know I think she does beautiful work. I think I look at the depth of the painting and things like that, but um, I haven't been in love with um, you know most of her sculpts. Just, just being very truthful. This is just me. Um, it, you know, it's not, hasn't been as much, um, they're a little bit more character in terms of the faces. And I, I think I prefer more of the sort of pretty faces, if that makes sense, on babies. And so it, it's just, yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, has their preferences, you know. Um, and I'm very happy with the babies that I have in my nursery. I'm just super content and I'm not really like out there looking for the next um, the next best thing I'm really not because I've collected what I liked and and that includes also for example I buy the high end and the low end you know so low end meaning um, things you know dolls that are not even considered reborns like I'll buy um, I have Ashton Drake I have Paradise Galleries um, so I don't discriminate like it's not like oh I only can have like the best dolls in my nursery or something like that it's like if I like it you know I and it speaks to me I'll, I'll buy it like you know a good example would be um, there's a doll you know my Caroline my Joseph three months asleep that I bought from reborns.com she was very inexpensive you guys I mean I, I think I paid I think I, Maybe it's a little gauche to say what I paid, but I paid two fifty for her, which to me is a steal of a price for um, a Joseph. Um, even though I know it's a cuddle baby, but so I think it's a fair price. But but you know it was, um, but she's a big baby, and normally um, you know would go for she's the cuddle baby Joseph. I think I saw. Um, actually, maybe it wasn't a cuddle baby, um, but the ones at the doll show were more expensive than that. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, so that, that baby, I wouldn't say, I think she's from a very good intermediate artist, but you know, not one of the prototype artists. Um, but you know, I, I don't personally care. You know, I think, I think, um, you can enjoy a doll as long as you love it. It speaks to you. Um, and sometimes it's in those like little flaws and imperfections, um, you know, that, you know, you, you can bond with that baby more too. So so I, you know, even though I, I guess it's probably true that some collectors might collect for status reasons, but I, I like to hope and think that most of us collect because we genuinely love certain dolls and, um, you know, want to have those in our collection. And, and that's really, sh that really should be the motivating driving factor. If you're collecting because you want to have a cool doll to show on your YouTube channel, I mean, you, I guess, I guess you can. And, you know, and, and again, I mean, that can be a calculated decision because maybe you want your channel to become more popular and to grow. And, you know, if you pick a popular doll, you'll have more viewers and, and that there is definitely some truth to that. But um, but yeah, I, I guess for me, like I've, I, I never thought of it that way. I thought it was like a super interesting question. And, um, and for me, I don't really, um, base my collecting on that, but, um, but yeah, nothing wrong with it. I think it's completely fine if, you know, you want to collect, um, the higher end dolls because, you know, you, you aspire to have something that is more coveted by others. Um, and, and one practical reason to do it, um, it, you know, not necessarily for the status, but for the resale value, like a Claire Taylor baby or a Romy baby. I think when you, I, I think for any of these expensive dolls, it is hard to recoup what you paid for them when you sell resale, but sometimes you can, and sometimes you can even, you know, have a, a bit of a gain, you know, uh, on your investment. If, um, if it's a doll that's highly sought after and it's very rare and hard to find, it's, it's just like collecting any kind of artwork, right? So, um, so that could be one good reason to collect from a well-known artist. It might make it easier to resell the doll later, you know, if you need to do that. Um, anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys for joining me for this chat. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Um, if you want to leave me a comment below and, um, yeah, let me know what you think about this topic. I, I think it's an interesting one and, um, definitely not, don't, not wanting to start any like controversy here, but I, um, but yeah, that's just kind of my opinion. I, I think it's just, uh, I, I, I feel like we each like, you know, what we like and, um, and I think that's great. Like, I think that's, I, I'm not going to buy a doll just because everybody else likes a certain doll. I have to love it. I have to be in love with it. Otherwise, it's just too much money to spend um, on something that I don't personally love and enjoy, right? Um, so, all right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Claire's going to say bye, and we will see you on the next video.
Bye.